This is the Out of Time Film Podcast, where your hosts, Tom and John, discuss everything from blockbuster films to TV and games like there's no tomorrow. Hello and welcome to the Out of Time Film Podcast. My name is Tom and as always I'm joined by my co-host John and this week we are talking about Nimona. Yes, <laughs> I'm very excited to talk about this. As we've been talking about animation for the past weeks with Susan May, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, and now Nimona. So we didn't know anything about Nimona. We only heard bits and bobs around Twitter about like, oh, there's a new film that's coming out. And oh my God, I cannot wait to talk about it. It was so fun. Yeah, me too. I absolutely loved it. I knew that it was great and I knew that it was, you know, based off a comic book, but I, I'm with you. I didn't really know much. And it was based on this... a comic book. Oh my God. It was based off a comic book. Yeah, I believe oh, it's a wow. French comic book. I might be wrong oh, about French. that. but. Oh. I just looked it up. It's not French. It's American. Oh. Why? I don't know why I thought it was French. <laughs> why did you but say like... it was French? I was like, <laughs> I don't oh, know. That's interesting how they got a French graphic novel. Nope. I guess yeah, I'm just no. stupid. Um, Full spoilers ahead for anyone who hasn't seen it. Briefly explain the plot for those who don't know. Okay. A knight is framed for a crime he didn't commit. And the only person who can help him to prove his innocence is Nimona, a shape-shifting teen who might be also a monster he's sworn to kill. Off the bat, the animation style, oh my, it was so unique of its 2D but 3D animation style. It was just so refreshing to see, like with the transformations with Nimona, she can turn into these different animals like a whale or a squirrel or a sea otter in the film. <laughs> and it really gave me Spider-Verse vibes with its mm. background it's film building as well, like some dialogues when you hear in the background, it would be really funny to hear them in, in the main action of the film. And the most interesting thing about the film was the setting, this futuristic medieval city. It was like, oh, wow, okay, that's really cool what they've done. They make this world like very self-realized. And with Ballister, he's completely lost. And then you've got Nimona, who I didn't know who was voiced by, by Chloe Grace Mortez. I love the voice acting in this. It was just so much fun. Yeah, Chloe Grace Moretz and Riz Ahmed have such a great dynamic in this movie. They Uh, are really the heart of it. And, you know, when they come together, this lost knight and this confused monster, while, you know, there is an overarching plot and they want to clear his name really what they find in each other is friendship you know like even from the beginning we know very clearly that Nimona feels confused and shunned by society and so does Ballister like they both don't feel like they fit but with each other they really become okay and what I loved about this movie was the comedic aspects really endeared you to the characters and they felt real and they felt like true friends there's a scene after they release the video that is exposing the director and as this video is going all throughout the kingdom it's just like a montage of those guys dancing Nimona is like a A shark um, Nimona's a shark yeah and Ballister has just like got sunglasses on and they're just dancing about with this like you know pink color all around them and oh they're just having God. a great time and that yeah. stuff just really worked it created these really strong characters so yeah. that later on when they kind of go through their troubles i really felt that yeah i really love the emotional moments in the film as well you can see their character development you know with the character dynamic as well you can see them grow in this film and learn it about each other even in the most comedic bits as well and it does it really well with its you know rewritten story of like a knight takes down a dragon in the story and then that becomes the hero there was a good quote about like children being the sword wielder like they take on and they I forgot the quote, but it was like Nimona talking about this world is protecting itself from monsters and they don't accept people like her. And it's like, it's a good quote that really made the film. I was expecting the movie to hit hard with its emotions because I thought to myself, there's a reason why this movie is being talked about. And so I kind of had a suspicion, yeah, like this is going to be something really unique and something really powerful. But what I wasn't quite prepared for was just how interesting the world and the universe that it built was. It's taking, as you say, it's taking this medieval kingdom and this idea of knights and of this kind of castle aesthetic and it's putting it into this kind of sci-fi world, which I thought was really, really interesting. There are so many influences. Again, we're coming back to the fact that Into the Spider-Verse just changed 
everything. And yeah. you can see the similarities in the animation to Klaus, which is a fantastic movie. And I almost felt a little bit of Blade Runner with like the different levels of the city and you know the way that like a lot of it was framed. And even at the end, it kind of goes a little bit Godzilla. It felt like a lot of these things mashed together in all the best ways. And from what I can tell online, this was a Blue Sky movie. Blue Sky, who made uh, oh, I- yes. Ice Age and Ice like, Rio, yeah. and I think I think they made Robots and oh Robots, most, yeah, I yeah, robots. and and most yeah. recently Spies in Disguise, but then they closed down, and this movie was oh, kind yeah. of like in limbo, like we didn't know what was going to happen to it, and then Netflix picked it up, and I'm really glad they did because again, it is something really unique, it's something really interesting, and I love how they bring this medieval scenario, this me- medieval situation into the kind of internet age. There's these yeah. questions of what is the truth <laughs> and who can you trust and it's all kind of seen through social media and this idea of like propaganda the whole time there's a lot of just like in the background of messages and billboards and like holograms that are kind of telling you one thing and spreading fear and spreading lies and Nimona kind of brings up this point to Ballister of what you have believed all your life that might not be the reality of everything yes. and a big part of this movie is nature versus nurture can you change what you believe like the things that the people know this story of this monster and this hero who defeated the monster was any of that ever really real your preconceived notions about what is good and what is bad can there be good in everyone and can you see that and can you change that was just so impactful yeah it's about like change and the fact that the city is so scared about change and like the walls as well because i got attack and tie and i'm gonna slip in attack and tie like with the walls you know like they're scared to go out or you're scared of change and i think that's the highlight of the film you know like this might be the life that you haven't realized or there's people like me or, you know it's like that change which is shown throughout the film with their character development and with their dynamic you know they get to learn about each other with this world. It was just so interesting to see that in the set pieces as well. My favorite was, it's a very short scene this, but it's the train station scene where Nimona pretends to be Val. One of my favorite jokes is like, oh, do you like freestyle jazz? <laughs> and then, yeah. And then he plays it, or Nimona plays it. And then go back to Ambrosius looking at the security cameras and then, as he hears, Nimona plays, you like freestyle jazz, and then Bush is like, he doesn't like freestyle jazz. <laughs> I was just so taken aback by just how funny this movie was. Kind of at the beginning, I was kind of like, okay, this is cute. But then just the amount of just shenanigans, like Nimona is such a funny character, you know, whether it be like from the beginning when she's just kind of like, okay, I'll escape and I'll do it your way, but I'm going to break things. And she the whole time she's just constantly like hitting random things and like knocking things over. And then at the end, there's a big moment where they go to Ambrosius and they try to give him this recording that they've got and they get shot out of them so they have to escape and yeah. Nimona is turning into all of these different characters and then she turns into like the serial dragon <laughs> and she starts <laughs> like this one character who is the most stupid knight is like oh it's the serial dragon he's like wait one second and then and then it starts like breathing cereal like she starts blowing cereal oh, crispy all dragon. Over them. yeah crispy, crispy dragon. dragon yeah exactly fantastic I thought that was so so funny and yeah. the sheer ridiculousness of it I yeah. thought that was just so, so very effective. Yeah. And they also balance that really well with the emotional stuff. Like straight after that scene, you yeah. get the moment where the child picks up a sword and is like monster and is scared of Nimona. And you see that really hurts Nimona. And even though she puts on this rough exterior of being on her own and being evil, really she's scared and she just wants love. And I think that's everyone in this movie that's kind of another thing that brings Ballister and Nimona together. They just want love at the end of the day. Yes. And I love I love the relationship between Ambrosius and Ballister, that they both love each other and Ambrosius has his duty and he can't understand it. There's a great moment between Ambrosius and the director where he just kind of, in his mind, he just starts to say like, I don't know what's oh, real. Yeah. I cut off his arm. What's going on? And it's like, you really feel that that, that love. And I've got to say, we've talked in the past about how annoying it is when movies are just kind of like only half ass gay characters but it was so yes. good to see this gay relationship at the center of a movie and being so important and they didn't shy away from the fact that it is a queer relationship that was yeah. again just really really fun and exciting it was, it was to see. so wholesome it was just great it was you know, just, it was great yeah. yeah i love that you know like they actually put in the relationship between these two gay characters and it 
was just so wholesome to see that. Not many animation films that I know have pulled it off. I mean, last year, was it? Yeah, Thor, Love and Thunder. The oh, title suggests God. it wasn't gay in it. <laughs> that movie, oh, God. We God. had We had Thor, Love and Thunder and Lightyear in the span of like a month. And it basically was like the biggest blow to the queer community. Yes. Of like it anyone like, who wants representation oh in your mainstream movies. It's yeah. like, nope. Nope, they're not going to get any representation. Oh, it's just Jesus. so sad. I, but here, really this is. is a great film to look into some LGBT representation. It's just mm. so wholesome. It's just so positive. And the other thing as well, going back to the funny bits, I love how the animation style really complements the funniest moments in the film. One of my favorite yeah. as well was when Nimona meets Ballister for the first time. When Nimona discovers that Ballister has a robotic arm. I love how Nimona just like goes into like this horror mode of like slowly turns to Ballister by saying, Did they give you the old one back? <laughs> the old arm back. It was just so funny. Yes. It was just like, oh, yeah, it's just great to see a film that has these characters who are completely different, but somehow they mm. get along really well. And it's not half assed as well. So like there's a full story between them. And mm. with Nimona's backstory, it was so so heart wrenching. And the fact that it was Glorith in the backstory, and it was like, oh, so that's the reason why Nimona attacked this whole city. You could really feel that emotion, that this full betrayal and this idea of like the world isn't really for change or all of that. That is the heart of the film, really. Another thing was like, you know, when Nimona is like, don't freak out, don't freak out. I'm going to change into this. And Ballast is like, I'm not going to freak out. And then he's like, oh, oh, what is this? Why yeah. Rhino. Yeah, it was just so fun. I love it. Yeah, I really liked seeing the progression of Ballister going from being like, can't you just stay as a girl? Can't you just stay as something that I'm comfortable with? But eventually becoming comfortable I am with her and, <laughs> and, and, and dancing with her when she's a shark. Like, not even caring about any of the stuff because he just learns to love her. And then having his faith wavered and having to question, you know, like, who do I believe? And am I answering the right questions? And I think that backstory scene is so tragic because in maybe three words across this whole sequence we see Glorith and Nimona become friends and you know have a great time together and just be really happy as kids are and then we see the adults and all their questions and all of their views on the world views that they think are right all coming in and telling them that it's wrong and then you know like completely turning Glorith against her we see it a couple times with kids who naturally aren't scared become scared and become violent because of what they've been taught to believe by the other generations but there's a lot in the movie which kind of says that the characters need to move beyond the beliefs of all generations. You know, you can see it so many parallels to the real world where people will hang on to what institutions tell them and what their family tells them when really they should kind of be making up their own minds and not stick to the unchanging ways. One of the greatest images I thought was when the wall was destroyed and the kind of the dust settles and we just see the mountains and yeah. everything beyond it. And you kind mm -hmm. of know that this kingdom can be okay because they are now going to accept the expansion and they are now going to have a more open mind. And I don't know whether they're going to make a sequel or anything, but I don't think it needs to. I think this is a perfect story story that yeah. wraps up really really well with this idea of hope and i know that recently we spoke about in our elemental view we said about the fake out death in that movie I won't spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it, but we were talking oh, about how annoying oh no, it is when a fake out death. No. <laughs> we were talking about how annoying it was when a character dies and yes. then they come back and it's like really annoying. But I think in this movie, I think it works because it's such a final note. Like you don't really need it. Like it doesn't really add anything, but it signals to Ballister. It's another thing that tells you, tells the yeah. audience, tells him that everything is gonna be okay. The fact that Nimona is back in some capacity. And I think that's a really sweet way to end the movie on. It's yeah. very kind of that final note of, yeah, it's going to be all right. And, you know, we're all happy and we're all fixed. And now monsters can live in this world. And I think it would be against the spirit of the movie if the final thing was that the monster died and everybody moved on. Like the fact that the monster can also live in this new world is a really nice thought for me. Yeah. The director was actually reminiscent of the past. And she wants the wall not to be destroyed and she wants everything in order. And that was the main antithesis you know, to the idea of, you know, Nimona and she's completely different 
and the idea of change, the perspective of monsters and monsters that can save everybody. And I love how at the end she says, I'm going to rewrite the story because it's actually the dragon or the monster that saved everybody. So that's the idea of like monsters who we see, you know, monsters in persons or monsters who are seen terrifying, but they're actually gentle and kind. So yeah, and the social media aspect plays that really well in that film. Like we can't make up our mind, you know, there's too many secrets, there's too many lies and they're trying to find the truth in that social media. And you can see that in the beginning, you know, like when the whole city is watching and who's going to be knighted in the beginning of the film. And you can see the whole public is like, what is the queen doing? Or they're scared of change or they're scared of like, there's going to be a new knight. So yeah, it is that core of the film yeah it just completely changes perspective you know like who are we going to see as monsters yeah i love the idea that social media crafts these villains in that moment of the opening we see ballister's face and we see his confusion and we see and we know that it's not him that has done this and we're with him the whole time but to the people in the city what they see is they see stuff on cameras and they don't see his face they just see this murder and the thing about the director is that she won't let go and that she she refuses to change and refuses to see anything from a light. And then she says she's trying to craft this story herself. And the final thing she says is go back to where you came from this, or I shall banish you back from whence you came. And it's still this rigid way of unmoving. She doesn't want anybody else to be one of the like heroes because she believes in this purity of this line of Glorith's ancestry. And like, all of that kind of comes together once again to kind of add to this fact. And also, even though this movie does have a lot of comedy in it, so much of that comes from Nimona. There's almost like a rigidity to the rest of the movie. What Nimona kind of brings to it is this joy and is this happiness. And, you know, apart from like, obviously, like the goofy moments, the biggest like, laughs come from her and she kind of opens everything up. Like the world is brighter when Nimona is, is around. Like I can see people really falling in love with this character because of how like delightful she is. Like, there's one really cool moment where during the serial advert, they use a particular song. And then again, when, you know, again, this is my favorite moment of the movie. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up every day. But when Nimona becomes Crispy Dragon and yeah. she shoots all the serial, it plays that music again, but like in a much kind of faster, upbeat way. And I thought that was really smart. And also yeah. a side note, I wanted to get this in somewhere, but that yeah. song. You, you that they love use... that scene so much. No, it's such a good scene. Um, that song. <laughs> love, that they let use... me defend it. Let me defend this scene. <laughs> that song that they use is the same song they use in Kick Ass when Hit Girl first enters the scene and kills no. all the people. And Hit Girl is also played by Chloe Grace Moretz. I absolutely adored. I mean, I love Kick Ass and I Wait, adored that. That level is of the kind same. Of... It's the same music. No, oh my god. Yeah, I thought oh. that was so good. I was okay, living for Okay, okay. I'm telling I got you, to give props like... that. That is a great <laughs> reference. You remember at the Oscars a couple years ago when they did the best like cheer moments? Oh. This is my cheer moment of the year. <laughs> like if I could tell you my best moment, it's this. I was just so <laughs> oh, excited. My god. There were just so many levels of Yeah insane going on at the same time yeah one of my favorite things about Nimona is that she's like this okay i want to say demigod but she's like this deity who controls the story you know what i mean like she teleports somewhere in the story or escapes it kind of really gave me that deadpool vibe to it she's somehow of another plane of existence she's almost like a fifth dimensional being yes and that doesn't ruin the story that was great i love that that was just a part of the character and they're like oh next time you'll be asking me that i have wings and then later on she actually has wings and then it's like oh thankfully you wanted wings to fly oh yeah the setup and payoffs they were so great like they're just little small things that come back for character moments or also for like big revelations i love an animated movie particularly animated movies because so animated movies are considered for kids and it is a medium that is kid friendly in a lot of ways but I love it when these kind of projects they don't treat their audience like idiots any movie shouldn't treat its audience like an idiot but especially stuff that is geared towards kids that's just so great and kids would be lucky to have this kind of story yes it's the idea of change it's kind of like a coming of age story for Nimona as well like the idea of the city sees her as like a hero she saved the city yeah, yeah. she kind of like comes to terms with herself in ways beyond just you know the city's acceptance i think almost she through that can see i mean we don't know because like we only really know that she's back at the end we don't know like how anything has changed for her but i would like to think that seeing the love that all the city has for her makes her more open yes that was just like great payoff 
for the ending for that as well. Like when Ballister, he stops Nimona and it was like, it kind of, it literally says it like, I see you. So it's like the idea of Nimona that she's just Nimona. She can't be a teen. She can't be a whale. All, all of a sudden she has to change. And she said that in a great scene where she was like describing what does it feel like to change? And she said, it's like a second before you sneeze. And that was a great way of like, you know, showing that really well for that emotional payoff for the end as well like the idea of she's just Nimona really and mm. you can see her as anyone really so that was like a really nice way of seeing that yeah I loved that moment so much at the end when she has become this giant creature that could even be her natural form who knows and the world stops everyone all the people attacking all the people running everyone just stops as Ballister puts his hand on her heart and the world stands still and he just says, I see you. That moment is so beautiful. I think it's undescribable what I felt when watching that moment, but everything in the movie came together and was just so beautiful to behold. I was so in awe of that moment. I thought it was fantastic. And if I had one criticism of this movie, it would be that I wanted more. It's yes! only an hour and 40 minutes, but come on, I would have sat through three hours of that. Are you kidding me? It would have been same, great. I same. do think that the beginning of the movie does kind of speed through some stuff. And it's a shame because I feel like they could have gone a little bit slower with it. And I know that yeah. there are plenty of reasons why they didn't go slow with it. And at the end of the day, it's only a small thing, but yeah. there's a lot more that we can do. And I don't think I want a sequel. I don't really want to see any more of this universe, but this story... I would happily, and it's not happening, but I would happily see an extended cut. <laughs> you know, I'd happily get the <laughs> Zack Snyder treatment and just have like a four hour version of Nimona because it is just so interesting. And this story is so infectious. Like it's going to be yes. one that I will definitely return to. Yeah, it's kind of like a comfort film in a way, yes. but not too dark or something like that. It's up mm. there with like Kiki's Delivery Service. Yeah. Uh, like it's something that is so funny. I mean, it's quite emotional, but it's just like mm. you're there for the comedy really. And um, yeah, it is yeah. such a great great film to laugh at and yeah so that is Nimona absolutely what are you going to give it out of 10 9 out of 10 me too fantastic thank you everybody for listening if you enjoyed it and you're listening on YouTube you can give us a like and subscribe if you want to see more and if you're listening on Spotify you can follow and give us a 5 star review if you think we're worthy next week we are continuing our little soiree into recapping some films that we missed and we're going to be doing John Wick chapter 4 which I know that you've seen John but I haven't yes. seen him I'm going to watch it literally in an hour I'm very excited because I've heard only good things oh my god yeah be prepared, though, because it would be a lot to go through with John Wick just killing everybody in the film. I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> I'm so ready for that. To be honest, I am really am curious to hear your thoughts on it because I, spoilers, I actually enjoyed it. But, um, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it's a lot better, which I'm not going to say. I'll say it next week. So, ah, uh, so yes, so. if you want to hear the end of John's sentence, you can get <laughs> tuned back in next continued. week. <laughs> <laughs> and you can send us an email at Aston Film Pod. Let us know your thoughts on John Wick Chapter 4 and ask us any questions, and we'll answer it right here on the podcast next week. And you can follow us on Instagram at Aston Film Pod to see your incredible thumbnails from Zayn Assel, on Twitter for more thoughts from me, and TikTok to see edited clips, which are also on Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts. And you can find links to all that in the description below. Thanks to Al Jones Mayor for the excellent theme and Ron Phillips vocals, as always. And I think that is everything yes thank you for the mu uh, no, no i keep saying this no, thank do you i need to sing thank you for no, the music again no not as last time because <laughs> i want to actually praise again thank you Zane. Yes. thank you l for the music i appreciate what you've done so far for the channel i know this is the second episode in the fourth year so yeah i haven't got my praise out for that but i, I really praise that for you too so i appreciate what you've done so far and uh, yeah, it is so amazing what you've done. So, yeah, Zane, you've done incredible with the art. So, you've been so consistent. You've been so amazing with the art. So, yeah, thank you. Couldn't have put it better myself. Yes. Uh, take what you're given. Give nothing back. Goodbye. Goodbye.